did a fantastic job. One thing I thought about last night after I left was how they they seem to really have a lot of fun while they're doing it. Nobody seems scared or nervous or anything. They just they do a great job. A um, couple things I want to tell you before we start. Number one is turn off your phone or just turn your sound down. Make sure you do that. Um, and in case of any kind of emergency, this side, those doors are unlocked. You can't see it, but right, you knock that down and there's an exit. Go through there and the door is right there. So this side can go that way and this side can go this way, you know, formally fashion sort of thing. Um, I want to make um, a special note again about the theater and how much we've been privileged to use Trinity for at least the past 25 years. They're so gracious to us. They've opened this theater for Palaestra through all the years. And um, tonight, Jack Hedden, again, is doing our lights. And so thank you, Jack Hedden. Kathy Kitzman, who I believe is the president, uh, treasurer of the theater, is also here to watch our children. So we're very pleased with that. So um, I will not go too much further on, introduce Colleen, and re oh, we will have refreshments available during the um, intermission. Okay, this is Good evening. Welcome to A Lighter Shade of the War. Um, I'm not going to say much. This play is funny. Please laugh a lot. We need your laughter. We've had a couple hard years, and so we picked this because we felt that laughter is important. So without further ado, I'm hoping that my characters come on stage, and I'm going to talk for a second more until they take the hint. That they're supposed to get on stage now. Here they come. So, the lighter shade in war. Here. 
Who's <laughs> 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 Reggie? I have the rose petals in here. Mr. Crowell, those are mine. I left your messages on your desk. Put the most important one on top. Remember the invitation for the International Private Detective Gala tonight? No time for glitzy fruit fruit parties, Miss Fagan. <laughs> I have a city to look after. <laughs> So what did the cat dragon today, Miss Flanagan? We thought he was just delivering the mail, but obviously he's got something else on his mind. Hmm. His name is Mr. Smith. Obviously a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's the deal, Mr. Smith? Do you want to big Bill's new cronies or something? See here, Mr. Charles, I've got something important to tell you, and I won't be treated in this manner. Well, then spit it out, then I haven't got all day. It's rather sensitive information. I was hoping we could discuss it in your private office, perhaps. I bet you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, that's why I suggested it. <laughs> sure you did. What a great suggestion, huh? <laughs> yes, well, your office would be the ideal place. Hey, you like calling the shots, don't you, Mr. Smith? <laughs> left on earth, I still would have fallen for her. She must have been a dancer to have gams like that. She is quite beautiful. Whoa, 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 buddy. Can't yeah, blur out stuff like that. Jeez, no harassing women in my office. You almost consider it, Mrs. Travel. Her voice was as sweet as honey dripping off sponge sugar. I had to keep my head on straight, though. Something told me this dame needed my help. My name is Clarice Latrice. My friend here said that you could help me, and I need your help, Mr. Trowell. Oh, I know. I knew the minute you walked in. Why, Mr. Trowell? You're more skilled than I imagined. How could you possibly know I had a mystery for you to solve? It's generally why people come here. <laughs> <laughs> so what seems to be the problem, Miss Clarice? I don't mean to interrupt you if you're busy. No, ma'am, my schedule is wide open. <laughs> <laughs> I was here first. Hey, can it? <laughs> Go sit back down, all right? Haven't you ever heard of the expression, ladies first? Dry up, please. Very sorry, I have to. It's simply terrible how I got involved in all this. Honestly, I can't say, but I must tell somebody. What? I'm a good guy, Mr. Trouble. Honestly, I am. I don't know how I get involved in the wrong crowds. I want to do better. I want to change. So will you please help me? Won't you? Help me with what? Something awful is going to happen tonight at the International Private Detective Gala. Something awful. So awful. Which is, I mean, what? I don't exactly know. All I know is it's happening tonight. I heard Big Bill telling his gang it was happening tonight. Did you say Big Bill? Big Bill? Yeah, Big Bill. Who's Big Bill? <laughs> Who's Big Bill? <laughs> Smith? Let me tell you. Big Bill is the most ruthless gangster this country's ever seen. Little guy. And he's planning something tonight? This might finally be the proof I need to put him away for good. Yes. Wait, but Clarice, how do you know all this? Because. Yes? Because I. What is it? Because I am. Come on. Because I am his girlfriend. Uh, well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. What's a tomato like you doing with a criminal like him? I already told you, I want to change. I can't handle this criminal lifestyle anymore. So will you please come to the gala and put a stop to that plane? Well, I'd love to, doll, but just one problem, see? Those hi-hats just won't let me into their little shindig. So. The invitation's still on your desk. There's no use. <laughs> Wait a second. I just remembered something. Well, Yes, the invitation is on my desk. So you come to the gala and put a stop to the plan. Well, seems like luck. 
and finally changed Mel Trentrell. Like a fat kid who sees an ice cream truck crash into a candy store. <laughs> yes. This was the moment I'd waited for my entire life. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Mr. Trowell, shouldn't you call the police and let them handle this? No, Miss Flanagan. No, no, no. See, this is not a job for the police. This is a job that only Detective Trentrell can handle. Now, uh, come on, Clarice. Let's head out and, so we can discuss some of the finer details of our plan. Mr. Trowell! Hey, can milk and toast. Back down. <laughs> really a detective indeed. The remarks to me, Tracy Dick. 
Yes. You know, you don't always have to practice my title with short. Just a technical dude. Thank you. Well, we'll make sure you join us tonight. Well, unlike these self-employed jokers, some of us have actual work to do. He's an easy, charming one. Actually, I wouldn't be here at all if you hadn't asked me to do security. Yeah, I gotta get him to come no matter how much I twisted his arm. I mean, who solves more cases than Dick? All of us officers have to admit, even though he's tiny, tiny, <laughs> he is sure good at what he does. Really good. Makes the rest of us officers look bad, you know. Uh huh. <sighs> well, Mr. Mayor, I'm glad that you can use your own mayoral club to get him here. If the signing is Dean Tracy Dick to do security, was the only way to get you here, and so be it. You have just as much of a right to be together as any of our other esteemed guests. Uh, 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 more so, actually. But please, don't put me in the same league as these hacks. <clears throat> Excuse me, what, Mrs. Yor. I resent you talking about me in such a fashion. Private inspectors, like myself, have solved many cases that the police, that being you, simply could not. Take the mask as a part of Mickey Mouse's, uh, ala cherche la masque. La masque? Go get the mask! <laughs> it is worth millions of dollars. Do you suggest this is the work of an amateur? And a bright tell, where is your item for the gala tonight? Oh no, that is right! <laughs> you do not have one. <laughs> That's because actual police work doesn't involve searching for goofy trophies. You know, this is goofy. What do you mean? Well, the fall is secure, perhaps we can bring in our guest of honor. Yep, all the entrances to the hotel are secured by police officers. But still, I think it's awfully risky to have all these precious items in one spot. Will come down. Who would dare to try any mischief? What? With all the world's greatest detectives right here? Hmm. Alright, go get him, Molly. Excuse me! Are you the head waiter? Because I asked this bozo for an English muffin over an hour ago, and it's still not here. <laughs> Auntie, I'm that is a police officer. Oh! Is that so? Oh, well, officer, I'm glad you're here. I'd like to report a crime. <laughs> Ooh, really? What seems to be the problem? It happened about an hour ago. Okay. Well, there was someone pretending to be someone else in disguise, if you follow. Ah, right. What leads you to believe that? Well, I ordered an English muffin <laughs> <laughs> from someone I had thought was a waiter. Oh! But I still haven't gotten my English muffin! Oh, well, I'll see what I can do. And thank you. Um, lightly buttered. <laughs> lightly. Gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. It's here. It is here. Frank Cilantro. <laughs> Hello, one and all. I'm sure I'm as happy to be here as you are to have me. <laughs> and I've taken time out of my busy touring schedule to be here at your mayor's special request. Good gosh, Mr. Cilantro, I'm, I'm your biggest fan. I don't suppose you'd sing the song? Oh, you... I'd be delighted. <laughs> You're ready for the show, Don. Hit it, boys! Fly me to the sun, don't make me do the work, cause I'm so famous. <laughs> Let me see what winter feels like on Saturn and Uranus. <laughs> Can we have a stroll, Mr. Lovely? Oh, could this evening get any worse? <laughs> well, the place is elegant, I gave it that much. <coughs> and it felt nice to be at the party with a classy dame like Clarissa in my arm. But I was glad she was with me for other reasons besides eye candy. See, it was a safe bet that one of the people in this room is working for the gangster Big Bill. Only Clarice here is the only one who can put the finger on him. Until then, well, I'd have to be careful for the both of us. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, 
I refuse to be in the same room with this guy. Oh, don't be such a stone of us. Mr. Mayor, who is this man? Then, my good man, is Trentrell. And not to defend any ability detectives here, but this guy is the best there is. <laughs> he rescued my little George from that vile gangster, Big Bill. <laughs> Oh my god. This is the one case he's ever actually solved. And I'm not even convinced that this big bill even exists. Well. Well, it was no secret that I didn't get along with the local PD. But Detective Tracy Dick had a whole other level of dislike for me. I was never quite sure why he got so worked up whenever we met. It's because you're an idiot. <laughs> because he knew I was a much, much better detective than him, and he just didn't want others to know. He seemed especially ticked off tonight. Probably jealous I was at the, I was at the dinner with a dish like Clarice. <laughs> Listen, it wasn't my fault ladies found me irresistible. So. Mr. Trowell, I do believe I should go freshen up in the powder room. <laughs> <laughs> probably thinking we could cover more ground together if we split up. <laughs> Trowel. I knew this convention was a joke already, but until you showed up, I hadn't realized how big of a joke it actually was. <laughs> well, it is with the esteemed Detective Tracy Dick. Did you manage to tell your, uh, did you manage to tear yourself away from the donut store? <laughs> <laughs> is that the best police insult you can come up with? Oh, I had more. Your comebacks are as flimsy as your detectives. Please, <laughs> this is supposed to be a festive occasion. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sorry, Mr. Slug. Mr. Slug would like the mood. I'd be delighted. <laughs> Hit it, boys. <laughs> and every time it snows, it snows. Quarters. We're from. celebrating your greatest accomplishments. Costumes. <laughs> you want costumes? Right, let's go through with them, shall we? Uh, you know, we don't need to necessarily get into that, it's, it's fine. Trout, <laughs> what's your proudest moment? Uh, you know, bragging's not especially my thing, but I appreciate it. Then allow me to commence. <laughs> this is a mask of the far to make you most difficult. The 20th century mask. It was en route to that museum in Paris when it was intercepted by that most devious of thieves, the Capulet. <laughs> he thought this plan was perfect, but he did not realize Jean-Louis Philippe Moustache was on his trail. He left a single thread of his disguise at the scene of the crime. I located at this thread and found the was only Un factory in all of Lyons that made such shreds. Sure enough, the mask was under this establishment. And it was recovered. Well, what about Le Cabriol, Inspector? Did you catch him? I'm afraid he is still at large. I'm sure you'll catch him soon, Inspector. Alright, that was pretty good, I'll admit. But I'm just dying to hear about Trowell's biggest case. Actually, I, uh, I'm not up for telling that story right now. I'm feeling a little under the weather, too. Feather? Oh, feather! No. So you want to hear about how I found this feather? Oh, no. He said it all started back in the summer of 33. Now, back in those days, feathers cost four pennies a bushel. But this feather was different. You see, Henry, oh, that's Herschel's boy, uh-huh, <laughs> had the notion to travel to some island in the South Pacific. This was before the war, mind you. Mm -hmm. Now, I said to Jimmy, oh, that's Herschel's wife. <laughs> that no good would come of it. But as usual, she didn't listen to me. You know, it's funny how many people don't listen to me. 
I've been telling everyone for years about my name's Natalie. Now her leaves keep blowing onto my yard, and it's so... Henry Strick. Oh, Henry Strick. So he goes off, and we see neither head nor tail of Henry. That's Herschel's boy. <laughs> not a letter. <laughs> not a telegram. <coughs> Just nothing. And poor Jimmy. Oh, remember, that's Herschel's wife. <laughs> She's just worried sick. Some people are just so inconsiderate. Like that no good Ethel. So Henry. Whose dog keeps digging up my petunias. <laughs> so Henry comes back. So Henry does come back. And he's filthy rich. <laughs> Buys himself this big mansion at the end of the street. A fancy car, the whole nine yards. But his prized possession is this here feather. <sighs> he says some witch doctor charmed it with good luck. Well, so says Ginny anyway, you know. But one day, <laughs> he leaves it at home. And when he comes back, the feather is gone. Is this story coming to an end soon? <laughs> <laughs> so they look high and they look low, but no one can find it. Well, no one except for me. I knew all along who the no good culprit was. Only one person could be so dastardly. Now guess who it was? Ethel. It was Ethel. <laughs> it was the butler! <laughs> Go figure! <laughs> Launcher when he was kidnapped last year? No, 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 no. That was a British detective that saved me from that awful criminal. In fact, my international hit song, Help, I'm Being Kidnapped and I'm Not Kidding, is all about that. <laughs> 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 Alright, so what happened to Ethel? 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 Ancient masks are fine and all, but Detective Trowell is a true hero. <laughs> he saved someone's life. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's, uh, we don't need to go any further with the details. I mean, a gumshoe's got to maintain some confidentiality. If you don't Nonsense, mind. good man. Okay. You saved the life of someone <laughs> incredibly precious to me, and I want the world to know about it. <laughs> you see, my George had wandered off, and the poor boy had gotten himself lost in the worst parts of our city. So a big bill soaks found him, and we're holding him for ransom. But Detective Trowell here risked life and limb to get him back to me, safe and sound. Let's give him a hand, shall we? My investigation shows that the dog was at a local pub, then picked up by a dog catcher when it ran away. I'm sorry. Okay, you know what? That's true. However, that was when it ran away from Big Bill and his gangsters when I busted it on their hideout, detective. And look, I had a lot more things to worry about trying to catch those thugs than catching a dog at the time. Right. And yet, you didn't manage to capture a single one of them. Look, detective. I don't go busting around in your business 24-7. What's your beef with me anyways? Alright, alright. The important thing is that George 
was rescued safe and sound. <laughs> Sorry, Samantha. I don't want this bad blood to ruin our evening celebration. Now shake hands and let's be done with it. <laughs> I think that's better. No, mine's better. I disagree. I'm more manly. Well, I disagree. Well, well, I disagree. I'm taller. I don't no. disagree. Let's <laughs> not disagree. I hate it. But that's true. Who was responsible for Frank Solange when he was kidnapped last year? I'm glad someone has finally asked. Ah, uh -huh. you must be that famous British detective, Mr. Solange's noble hero who threw the kidnappers. No, no, that's just Watson, my assistant. Mr. Solange's liberation is due to the work of someone with far more intelligence. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present. What in the blazes? <laughs> you don't see. Who is that? I don't know, they're shouting from the hallway. Why wouldn't they just come in? Why talk them out there? <laughs> because a proper introduction is in order. Don't you Americans do anything with propriety? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present... Wait a minute. There shouldn't be people wandering about out there. We have the place on lockdown. Are you saying we have a security breach? Mm. Confund it all. Wouldn't you please just be silent so that way Watson can make the introduction? Mr. Cilantro, perhaps the song would create the proper ambiance? A grand idea! <laughs> Hit it, boys! <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present Miss Shirley. Oh, why are the lights out? Oh, I can't see! I can't see! Oh, 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 I can't see! Oh, 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 Someone beat the guitar out of me. Yes! Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present Miss Shirley Holmes. Oh dear. Hotel, and you yourself are not likely to own a bakery. It's only logical that 
Francine's the baker. Can you assist her? How do you... No, Francine? Yes. I don't. Then how? Your handkerchief, monsieur, has the name Francine monogrammed onto it. I deduce that she must be your beloved wife, since you were willing to bake in her shop just to spend time with her. And because the majority of the baking is done at night to be ready for the early morning customers, it's likely you're needed at this very moment. Miss Holmes, I'm amazed. Oh, Pasha! Any dummy could have told you that. <laughs> well, Indeed, it is all very elementary. You are right, though. I must get back to my Francine. Gentlemen, oh, yeah, ladies. I leave in confidence that you'll rescue all that was taken by Well, uh, that was a nice party trick, Kitty Pie. But, uh, now it's time for the real detective where to start. So, we. My thoughts exactly. So, clear out the lot of you. This is a crime scene. Yeah. No, thank you. I will respectfully decline. My skills will be of use to you. No? <laughs> no dice, Inspector. Maybe they'll let you civilians traipse around wherever you want to in France, but not here. Which is why, Detective Beauty Trentrell, let's face it, we may have had our differences, <laughs> but no one knows this town better than this guy. Yeah. yeah. No. Not in your <laughs> wildest dreams would I work with you. Oh, listen here, minuscule little shorty. <laughs> have some respect. For all of us. <laughs> Do you know how many cases I have solved? Seventeen. How many have you solved, eh? Two hundred and sixty-eight. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you, Shirley Holmes? Since everyone feels like complaining today, you may as well be your protesting too. Oh no, it's perfectly fine. If you'd like me to leave, then I shall do so. Well, you can take that objection in. Wait, you're actually going to leave? Indeed. No need to ruffle any feathers. Alrighty then. It's hard to believe only one of you has some uh, common sense. <laughs> yes, there's nothing to be gained from loitering about here. I quite believe I've seen all I need to to solve the case. There it is. Look, I'm about to bring in a frenzy squad for a three-day crime scene investigation, and you just gladly state that you've seen all you need to, and boom, it's solved. Yes, in all probability. You do well to doubt Shirley Holmes. Well, what could she have possibly seen in just a few minutes? No, don't ask that! Ugh. Now we're going to be here all day. <laughs> I see everything, Detective. You see, unlike all of you, details do not escape me. I've noticed there are 28 light bulbs in this room. One burned out. I've noticed that the mayor was late for the party tonight because he nicked himself while shaving, indicating that he was in a hurry. I've noticed that Miss Marbles has already eaten one English muffin previous to this one, because of the butter stain where she set down her current one. I've noticed that there's scuff marks on the floor under the table, indicating a trap door of some sort. Not that this has any bearing on the case, mind. A mind-based. trap door! <laughs> there is always a trap door. How else could ever see of disappear like that? There is always a trap door. <laughs> yes, as I was about to tell you, it has not been used since yesterday, and is <coughs> therefore of no importance to the case. How can you be so certain? Because the sheen and lack of dust on the floor shows it's been waxed just before the party, which formed the seal. If the trap door had been used during the robbery, this seal would be broken. My goodness, don't you people observe anything at all? Well, <coughs> I had to admit, he's getting at some brains. I had my own thoughts and ideas about what, went, uh, about what went down that night, but I was willing to give her opinion a fair shake. Normally I worked alone, but I had the feeling she and I would get along and just fine. Plus, it didn't hurt that she was quite a looker, too, let's say. Excuse me? Okay, well, uh, thank you, Shirley Holmes, for the intel about the light bulbs and the old lady's eating habits. I'm not sure whether that's impressive or disturbing, but now it's time to leave it to the real professionals. Professionals? You bloody fashionist! I drink it I think you need to let these private investigators help you. And they're the best. Thank you. Yeah.
Mr. Mayor. There is no way I'm compromising my integrity to work with these jokers. Well, I'd say your integrity has already been compromised. And then this crime happened. Who? You were supposed to be providing security. Who? He's got us there, boss. Shut up. You know, my George has been talking to you. Look, look. Just because we messed up on security doesn't make them any more qualified to do the investigation. Well, in case you've forgotten, Dick, I am mayor here, not you. And that means I'm in charge. And they said, I said they get a chance to prove their worth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. You know what? Fine. You want to give them a chance? Sure. But I'm not using any of my police force to help them out, just so they can get all the credit. I'll give them 24 hours to solve it, then I move in and clean up the mess. Y'all got it? 24 hours! Fair enough. Good luck, detectives. I pass next. Yep. All the best. Very well, Watson. The game is afoot. Let us be on our way. Uh, no, no, no. I must insist for a man one moment. You see, I am not convinced that you know what you think you Is that so? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I've got a pretty good idea myself as to who the culprit is. I assure you all that the matter is well in hand. Yes, you are confident. I can tell. <laughs> but you said earlier, no criminal could have match. And uh, <laughs> I know something about his story. And know there is at least one criminal who is a worthy opponent for you. Art he? <laughs> Yep. Maureen Artie, criminal mastermind and arch nemesis to Shirley Holmes. And more than a match for any of you. I see, Miss Ustash, that I have underestimated you. You're wise to suspect her. If she is involved, and it is my belief that she is, then I must face her alone. There's none more devious and cunning than she. Well, except for la cabulaire, I am certain. He is capable of a robbery of this magnitude. But here's the thing. In this town where there's crime, there's Big Bill. This? It's got a stink all over it. He's the felon here, and he wouldn't allow anybody to threaten his criminal empire. You young whippersnappers think you know everything. You've got it all wrong. I know who the real culprit is. Oh, really? And who do you think he did in? My next door neighbor, Apple. <laughs> what? Of course. There's no evidence to support that claim. Oh, oh, oh. But that's just what Apple wants you to think. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, look. Obviously, you all can't be right. So why don't you each go one by one and explain what you guys think happening over there, huh? What do you think? Huh? Oh, dearie Jane. You're a sweet girl. But let's just let the adults talk, okay? <laughs> now I know what we should do. We should each go around and say what we think happened and then decide <laughs> where to go from there. Oh. Brilliant idea. <laughs> the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> I shall be <laughs> you see, La Cambolaire was in the room the entire time, just waiting for a chance to reclaim what I had taken from him. But La Cambolaire was not the other to ever sing. No, 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 no. He merely wanted the mask as a far to make him all see fit. Mrs. Holmes, pretentious girl from the hallway. I'm glad someone has finally asked. Made for a very nice distraction. But when the lights went out, La Cabolaire could not resist an even greater opportunity. And even so, I would bravely try to fight him in the darkness. Oh, oh, shoot! <laughs> he eluded me, and so he took arrows. The man, the buzzer. He 
clumsy male's little dog. And grabbing Frank and on his way out. He made his way. <laughs>
It might have been dark, but these eyes work just fine, you know. And I saw exactly what went on in there. <laughs> you want to know who came waltzing into the room? Ample! <laughs>
ready here, sweet talker? Cool, Reggie. We won't be together forever. Well, so anyways, <laughs> this, I'm a splitty. I have really no need to be jumpy like that. Sorry, Mr. Cowell. I just wasn't expecting you. It's all right. Well, anyways, this is the old office. Truth is, I don't spend much time here. I'm usually too busy out on the streets. Where the action is. Yes, of course. It is a lovely office. And perhaps you'll introduce us to... Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, that's Miss Flanagan. She keeps the place running while I'm gone. This is uh, Detective Shirley Holmes. Pleased to meet you. And this is uh, Waltz. Enchanté, mademoiselle. Miss Flanagan, you have something in common with my dear assistant here. What do you mean? You've both been on holiday to California recently. And how would you know that? What's it? You told me. Me. <laughs> ah, well, it's written all over you, really. The distinct pattern on your gorgeous nails can only be the work of one Vicky Duke in Los Angeles. I made a small case study of nail polish and geography, and those are her trademark. Of course, it could be the work of a copycat, but then I noticed the fresh tan line on your wrist, as well as palm tree souvenir on your desk with some California on it. Huh. Yeah, you're right. She just got back from vacation there. Huh. Well, you got some skills, you know that? Well, it's a remarkable coincidence, is it not? But let's not bother the poor lady with your deductions, Holmes. Perhaps we should get what we came here for. Quite right. Mr. Trowell, the map is so graciously offered. Right, sorry about that. You know, I still think it would be, uh, well, it'd be best if I came along with you. Yes. I'm pretty, I mean, I'm pretty much a walking map to see myself. There, those maps. Yes, but as I told you, I prefer to work on my own. What about him? <laughs> Watson doesn't count. He just sort of tags along, like a puppy. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I uh, I usually work alone too. I'm so much easier that way. So why the interest in breaking your solitary habits with me then? Well, it's uh, no. I had to admit this dame was on to me. She was so smart she made me feel like a sap. And looks, man, if I had to make up for every time I saw a woman as beautiful as her, well. Well, I'd actually have about five cents. <laughs> what was I supposed to do, though? Tell her that I loved her at first sight? What kind of reaction would that get? Uh, why would a classy babe like her be interested in an old, run-down, deadbeat like Ventrell? Still, though, I was determined she knew something about this case that I didn't yet. And I'd find out what it was, at best. Yeah. I, I do think it's best if I run this first part of the investigation on my own. Although, once I have my findings, I'd be happy to share them with you. Good, good day, Mr. Trowell. Well, and just like that, she was gone. <laughs> I could tell it was going to take a lot of work to win her over. If only there was something she had missed by her privacy. A clue for me to find. I could impress her then. Besides, Clarice had said Big Bill was up to something there. Maybe he had left something behind as well. Hmm. Yes, Miss Flanagan, I'm going to head back to the hotel and see what I can find. All right, good luck. <laughs> luck is for chumps. <laughs> then you'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this! 
so we can have the singer and so the stuff they out here. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, those smug detectives were like patting themselves on the back when, boom. You <laughs> <laughs> really get us better at switching. Well, they don't pay us much anymore. Well, anyway, those smug detectives were like patting themselves and boom, lights go out. When they get them back on, everything is gone. He's in the mayor's dog. <laughs> Serves them right. What do you mean? Oh, those detectives think they're so clever. It's about time something. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, think about this. <laughs> think about what? They're How so easy would it have been for us to do, huh? They probably would have never found out. I mean, of all the people to suspect, why not us? And when the power goes out, <laughs> who has access to the fuse box? These guys! Who knows that if you can create the open place and could stash the goods where no one would suspect and clean up the evidence? These guys! And who would no one would suspect because we're hard. <coughs> Working employees of this here establishment. <laughs> well, employees anyway. <laughs> and they didn't even come to interview us or question us or nothing. <laughs> nope. Why talk to us? We're just. <laughs> you know what? I say, the next time an opportunity like this arrives, we do it. Do what? Steal! <laughs> I'm glad I am not the only one that they come back to take a closer look at the trap door. It is definitely a door. <laughs> oh yeah, it's... Hey! Hey! Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! What do you two think you're doing in here? This is a crime scene. It could be a race of important evidence. Please, just... Oh, uh, gosh. Sorry! We're just doing our jobs, man. Yeah, yeah. What do those two belugas know about crime, right? <laughs> Please. <laughs> The wax seal. It is still over the trap door. No one has been through it yet. And they went and replaced that burnout bulb, sure they noticed. It's probably important. Yeah. So, you like that woman? Huh? What gives you that idea? Well, like you said before, it's a party. Oh, that's one of your little triggers. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you're a perceptive guy, Inspector. Well, I guess you call it love, yeah. Love? Detective, I always said like. Oh, well, uh, that's, that's what I said too then, actually, so. <laughs> Those skills are all very impressive. But I do this missing a couple of them. This, I cannot do Yeah, yeah. And she wouldn't listen to me about Big Bill either. <laughs> Who is this Big Bill? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked, Frenchie. Do it, Carl. Alright, Frenchie. Here's the deal. <laughs> Big Bill. Kingpin of crap in this town. Oh, he's got his fingers and everything. I mean, racketeering, bootlegging, gambling rings, and a whole lot of smuggling. <coughs> he's a real bad egg, that one. Tony, my name's Tony. Ah, 
isn't Tony the Snitch? Well, Inspector, we tried, but it's, it's no use. I've never met a more hard-nosed, tentative goon as this guy. We'll never get any info out of him. Oh, really? That's what you know. I'm not telling you nothing. Especially not about anything under the table. <laughs> 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 Go on. I'm not telling you how Big Bill's been having us put stuff under there for the past while. See, so he's too good. We can't, we can't break him. He's, it's, sorry, I'm sorry. We tried the best we could, but he's, he's never going to give up. <laughs> <laughs> Please, won't be better coming. Get it back. Get back. Come on, you. Yeah. Take the hat. <laughs> it's probably the funniest crime of the century. <laughs> we never pulled off something half that good before. <laughs> yeah, right under their noses. Come on, Clarice, isn't that hilarious? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. See you, Corin. Well, there they were. <laughs> Big Bill's cronies. <laughs> and then Clarice with them, too. <laughs> Shh. No, no, let them know see. You're gonna give us away, Jesus. <laughs> this is the moment I had waited my whole career for. Oh, they were fine. <laughs> well, jeez. Somebody sang something. <laughs> it was me. It was me. It was me. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, that's right. Soon they were going to find justice in the hands of Detective Trentrell. Trentrell! You know what? No, wait, wait. <laughs> Watch the coat. Hold it! <laughs> so, Trent Trowell, that would be your last. No, it was sticking your nose into our business for so long. And you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm done running away from you. Big Bill. Tell him, boss. Yeah! <laughs> oh, I knew you were behind it all. Behind what? What do you mean, behind what? The kidnapping of that canary, Frank Cilantro, and little George, and the stealing of the feather and the mask. Why don't you just admit it before you silence me and my partner sneaking out over here for good? <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Every time a crime happens in this town, I'm blamed for like some sort of monster. It's okay, boss. Yeah, what do they know? Nobody understands but us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that you are using that trap door, I'm planning something secret. Uh, Tony the Snitch, you, have you been snitching again? No, I'm not. Except what you just said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. I went to try trial for help. Please don't be mad. Honey, I could never get angry at you. But how did you find out? My friend Darlene told me. I was telling her how you did a quick crime, but then she said that you were up to something in here, and then I should go to Trent Trial for help. It was the only way you'd learn. So that's how it is, huh? You'd sell us out to this private eye. No one betrays Big Bill! Yeah, no one! Especially not about the flower shop. Yeah! <laughs> Don't you <laughs> talking about that! <laughs> oh, guys, guys. Nah. It must be a cool one. I agree, it's a good name. <laughs> Time I come clean for the woman I love. Maurice, I was gonna say this for your birthday, but here it is. I'm done with crime. I had nothing to do with that business yesterday. You wanna know what's going on down there? See for yourself. <coughs> Boys. They're criminals, so anything can come out of there. <laughs> what is that? What? Oh, flowers! <clears throat> yep, not on the flowers. Nothing but flowers. I do not believe this. Excuse me, Mark. Yes, please, check it out. <laughs> the boss should go make sure we eat the bodies. Ignore <laughs> <laughs> <Before> that. <laughs> anyway, I know how much you love flowers. I sold away all of my business ventures and put it towards saying a countrywide flower chain. Oh, 
No, I don't believe this. No, no. It's for real. Completely legit. They're going to be called Clarice's Chrysanthemums. That's beautiful, boss. Yay! <laughs> 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 it's kind of a dumb name, actually. But... <laughs> oh. If I had not seen it with my own eyes, I would not believe it. Nobody's nothing at all! There is nothing but flowers! That's it? No. That is all! It's very disappointing. It's a bust. Wait, I don't understand though. I mean, why put all the flowers in a secret hideout in this hotel? Well, it's, uh, I used to keep other stuff down there. <laughs> um, it's nice storage space, like any other. <laughs> The owner, uh, what's his name again? Yeah, Mr. Benedict. Right, right. He knows all about it. It's completely legit. <laughs> well, it seemed like Big Bill was clean. I knew I should have felt happy or relieved, but, well, instead I felt as cheated as the day when I found out that Twinkle Twinkle Little Star was the same tune as Baba Black Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after all, what was Detective Trentrell without, well, Big Bill? Come on, Han, isn't there anything you can do to help him? Have a flower, we'll make it feel better. I'm uh, allergic to those. Thank you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> right, Trentrell, I had no idea I was so important to you. Yeah. Tell you what, since I'm turning over a new leaf and all, I'd be glad to let you know about some of the shadier characters in this town. In exchange, you could look over certain details of my past. What do you say? There's still a lot of bad guys out there. <coughs> well, it seemed Big Bill was right. Yes, justice still needed to be served. And this town did need someone to look after it. You know, with this case unsolved, Detective Trentrell, well, he still had work to do. Holmes, I went to the city's greatest detective, Trent Trowell, but 
He wasn't interested in what I had to say. Is that so? And what is it you wanted to say? That you were responsible for the crimes last night. That's preposterous! Who would believe Shirley Holmes could do something like that? Marie knew it. She told me all about it on our date yesterday. On our date. We went to the movies. <laughs> Don't fall for her trickery, sir. She is the one who committed the crime. No, do call me Seth. We all know who the real villain is here. How could she have? I was with her the entire night. We went on a walk in the park, we had dinner, and we saw a movie. Of course she didn't do it herself. Marine R.T. would never stoop to the level of getting her hands dirty in that way. She has an entire network of criminals working for her. <laughs> what? <laughs> Work of criminals. I've only known her in a short time, but she never did anything like that. Why do why do Mac and Stream that? It's terrible. You take that. It tastes like pickles. <laughs> I'm shut up, I don't know what she put in there. Cream on, maybe? Maybe she gets another one. She's a villain. She's the villain. Do call me yourself, Watson. We all know who the real villain is. What? I'm not sure what you mean. Surely, Holmes, of course. Nonsense. Yes, nonsense. Who would believe something like that? This is such a stretch, Doctor. Don't you think it odd, since she knows what we do, and since she knows our minds so well, it would not be a stretch to say that she is a criminal mastermind even greater than I. It is through sheer deductive reasoning I make the conclusions I do. Yes, yes, but you do read a lot of psychological dissertations on the criminal mind. So obsessed with how to commit crimes yourself. To know my quarry better, of course. Of course, of course. But you do know common police procedures <laughs> and what they offer to the look. So that I can find those clues myself. Really, Watson, <laughs> don't tell me you're starting to believe this woman. No, no, it's just... <laughs> interesting, that's all. Yes, very interesting. It'd be rather easy to convince others that Shirley Holmes is so good at solving crimes because she is the one who commits them. Listen, you're wasting your breath on Watson here. He's loyal to the end. And your little friend, Mr. Smith, isn't even here anymore. So you can drop the charade. I will find out your involvement in this, as I always do. So laugh all you want. But soon, you shall be laughing in a jail cell. Come along, Watson. Yes, yes, I'm coming. <clears throat> Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. I'm leaving. I'm sorry, John. I think our relationship has run its course. It's just that I've got to get back into England. <laughs> because Shirley Holmes won't be there to stop me. What? Was it something I said? No, John. You played your role beautifully. It's just that I have a criminal empire to run, and I've been away too long already. So, you are a criminal? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, Shirley Holmes didn't do those things? Of course she didn't, and neither did I. But I could see that someone was setting up a grand heist, and no one supports an opportunity for crime that time. At first, I thought of beating the unknown criminal to the punch, but when I found out who the real villain was, well, I came up with a much better idea. Instead of stealing a few things to make sure that he was a foolish, but a perfect way to rid myself of the incorrigible nuisance for good, and all I had to do was frame it for a crime she didn't commit. You can't do this. Well, there's nothing you can do about it anyways. You've told me everything. Now, I'll, I'll go to the police. I'll tell them. And tell them what? I've done nothing illegal. Well, wait. <laughs> At least not here. Um, I'm sure they ought to be psyched against Shirley Holmes rather convincingly. There's nothing you can do. You can't save her. But I've got to try. Oh, that was horrible. Now I know why I fell for you in the first place. Well, all the best. Toodles. Stop putting those coffee cups like that. I don't want that charge in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Officer, officer, I'm watching you. <laughs> 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 
Yes, sir. Oh, what is it, lad? I've got, I've got information regarding the crimes last night. The kidnapping and the robbery. Really? Well, let's hear it. Someone's going to be accused for a crime that they commit. Uh, I see. You know, we're just dying to solve the case. Yes, of course. Come with me, sir. Tell me everything you know.
you two on the table right there. And ate about a dozen yourself. Then they turn the lights back on and pretend they had no idea what just happened. 
hope you're all proud of yourselves. You should know that we're all very disappointed in you. <laughs> Likewise from us. Yes, how could you all turn on us so quickly? Our closest friends. Friends? We're more like your servants. We're slaves. Ah, oh, come on, Miss Flynn again. All right, everybody, I treat that little chicky over there with the utmost respect. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> You give us no credit. Nothing but lowly sidekicks. Messieurs, I learned you has never complained about our history. Then. That's because he doesn't say anything. <laughs> 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 Let me ask you all a simple question. In fact, if you can answer this correctly, we will do the utmost of clear your names. After all, we are such great friends. This should be easy. Right, no problem. What are our first names? <laughs> uh, that, 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 that is not fair. He can't even tell you his first name. <laughs> uh, that's duck soup. It's, uh, Miss. Yes, there we go. Miss. No, no, no. Missy. Yes, Missy. Missy Flanagan. <laughs> Come on, Auntie. You should at least get this one right. What? Uh, I knew it a minute ago. <laughs> I'm old, okay? <laughs> well. 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 With your stupendous brain power, your encyclopedia like knowledge, you can name every chemical compound known to man. You can't even take the time to learn my name. It's Reginald, Dr. Reginald Watson! Well, uh, thanks for the rescue and all, but 
I mean, we're gonna have to put your family reunion on hold. We have to get out of here before they wake up. I can't ah, okay. <laughs> Yes, we need to find a way to regroup and clear our names. Yeah. Oh, come with me. I know just the place. There's everything to look for us there. I just said you were from jail. This is how you thank me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
juicy stuff. Soon our plans will be complete. The mayor was more than willing to organize this silly gala for our dummies. I think that's you, Holmes. <laughs> he is even bringing in the chief of detective from the police force. I think that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Much to our newest associate's delight, I that's so. Gabby Maloney. I have written to our colleagues, and they assured us that their dummies are coming as well. I think that's us. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
Tracy Dick of the police. Put your hands up and don't move. Well, it was a nice little scene, yes, but now it's time justice was served. <laughs>
about you, Miss Marbles? What are you going to do now? Oh, well, I reckon if I hurry, I can join Apple for some water skiing. <laughs> well, that sounds great. Hey, we can use my boat. <laughs> Lovely. Careful now. Oh my gosh, I'll A rich it all. man. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Captain, I should say, hey. that's another notch you can add to your belt. Congratulations. Thank you, but uh, you were the one who found the letter, so uh, I think this successful investigation is yours. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. I hope we can work together in the future sometime. Ha! No. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys. Sorry. <laughs> well, Mr. Travel, I must admit, I was most impressed. You are a most fascinating man. Well, <laughs> it seemed like the end of a long, hard day. And there I was, alone with her. This was finally my chance to tell her I was dizzy about her, how she was the one for me. But did I have the courage to tell her? Mr. Trowell, my excellent powers of deduction lead me to believe you have something to ask me. Well, I, uh, I hope you wouldn't mind, uh, getting a cup of joe and talking sometime. Like a date? Yeah. I think that's an excellent idea. Fantastic. Ladies first. <laughs> Jane, who 
the most incompetent detective of them all. Oh, are you really going to insult her? My aunt was the one detective that came the closest to figuring out what happened at the gala. None of your detectives even came close. Oh, right. Her friend Ethel came in and ate muffins. Like, that meant anything in the investigations. You should really stop pointing fingers, Mrs. Flanagan. Your letter from Watson over there was the thing that gave us away. Prince Hall never pays attention to anything that's on my desk or in my letters. How was I supposed to know that today would be the day he decides to check up on what I'm doing? Still, you should have destroyed the letter. You don't think I know that now? This isn't helping us. Do you know what the law enforcement does to the criminals the detectives catch? Of course not. A lady never visits a prison. Well, that's about to change. I know they usually throw away the key. You're not wrong. I can't go to prison for life. Not. The rest of us are. What are you going to try to do? Bargain your way out of it? If I have to. You can't just bargain your way out of it. I can. You that know, makes I no can't. sense. No, I you can't just bargain your way out of it. I can't bargain your way out of it. Don't! Thank you. Now, if you're all done pointing fingers and assigning blame, I have a way to get us out of the mess that you all have brought us into. Wait, how do I? One moment, my much goodness. Allow me to explain. Working with the great Shirley Holmes, one learns a thing or two about studying human behavior. And watching the infamous Maureen Arty, one learns to always have a backup plan in the off chance something goes wrong. So, what's the plan? Darlene, do you have a hair pin in your hair? I always have the men. Great. We can use this to pick the lock. Once we're out to the street, we need to split up and get lost in the crowd. The police will no doubt be searching high and low for us, so grab disguises. Hats, wigs, new clothes, whatever you need to disguise who you truly are. Our rendezvous time is 10.45 p.m. sharp. Don't be late. We'll meet at... Whoa. Did you miss me? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 